Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining for today's show. And we have a special guest today, Jasper Ham, CEO and co-founder of Crypto Bank of Africa. So hello, Jasper. How are you feeling today? Hello, guys. Nice to meet you all. And uh, I'm happy and it's an honor uh, to be here, Ivan. Oh, that's amazing. So just to remind you guys, Jasper is an entrepreneur and investor in Africa, and he has a huge experience in Web3. And I'm thinking we're going to have a huge and big talk about Web3 technology and its advances. So I want to mm, make things clear first for our viewers. So my first question is going to be like, what are the key differences between traditional Web3 technology and new Web3? So what are the benefits of Web3? I think, uh, Ivan, good question. Web3 really relies on centralized structures, shifting financial inclusion, innovation in contrast with Web3 decentralized architecture. It's more driven by blockchain, empowers users to DeFi and other emerging solutions. So I think even to the adoption for the African ecosystem, this will bring much more financial inclusion. My next question is, what advice do you have for companies looking to adopt this new Web3 technology? You really, as a Web3, I think you should understand uh, that final inclusion is not only a goal, but it's imperative. Embrace blockchain transparency and programmable logic to en enhance fintech offering. Really, you should uh, collaborate with stakeholders, ensuring Web3 solutions with specific needs. Also, I can show you a sample of www.vanillapay.me where you really see the gap between complexity and mass adoption. Mm, so basically, Web3 is all about using blockchain, so like make it as simple as possible, while Web2 relies on traditional, like all technologies, yes. excluding blockchain. So blockchain is not involved. Indeed, I think really, but uh, to change from Web3 to Web3, you have a lot of uh, difficulties uh, to do this. But mm -hmm. I think uh, driven really by the blockchain, there are several uh, good solutions uh, for to, to help this problem. Mm -hmm. But how do you like make the step to like embrace how do you understand when it's time to transfer to Web3? It's, it's mainly, mainly Ivan, uh, with user education. I think it's the, the main issue uh, for, for the people to adapt. Also, I know that private key is really uh, complicated to, for people to understand, but it's just a way of protection. Okay, but speaking about challenges, what are the key challenges that you face when working on Web3 projects? I think the, the main challenges is the, the, the regulations, governmental. It's really, uh, so mm -hmm. now for Europe, you see it's getting uh, certain standards. But uh, for example, our market, emerging market in Africa, there is no re regulation at the moment. So you really need to comply with the local laws who are, who are adapted. Mm -hmm. Speaking about um, government regulations, how do you address concerns about this lack of the government regulation, not in Africa, but in the entire world? So this legal framework for Web3 really plays a huge role, right? I, I think the legal framework, uh, it's coming, but uh, it really needs to paramount by advocating with pragmatic regulations and that foster innovation, you know, mm -hmm. really ensuring consumer protection. Companies can navigate regulatory to drive really this Web3 adoption. Okay, so well, you actually spoke about uh, like the complexity of Web3 that not many users do really understand the um uh the private keys role in that in that sphere of web3 so so how do you respond to criticism that web3 technology is way too complex and difficult for average users so far i think while well, complexity can be a concern a really web3 potential for financial inclusion and ownership democration cannot be overlooked really Design a user interface that abstract technical complexities coupled with educational in initiatives really that can empower to navigate the landscape with confidence. Like for, uh, for me, the revolution already began, begun in, in Africa and worldwide working against the system because we, you cannot, uh, it needs to change. Mm -hmm. well, I'm really interested in how people 
uh, educate people in Africa about Web3 and blockchain technology. Can you describe that? It's all about education. It's all about education and in a user-friendly way. So even to give you an example, uh, what I told you with our project Vanilla Pay, we created uh, the same securities as a private key holding, but not with the complicity with the 12 seed phrase. So it's just like a pin code, but it's the same security uh, measures. Mm -hmm. But will it have impact on security and will it like have maybe more security problems in the future uh, using this way that you offer? I, I really think we, we should look, look at the DeFi and the, the possible potential uh, benefits of Africa to apply more Web3 than the Web3 uh, Web2 options. Mm -hmm. You already see big companies all uh, want to start a hub in Africa because uh, it's really the emerging market where, what, you, what it needs the most. So to tell you the next billion users will come from emerging markets like Africa, Latin America, Asia. So it's just like baby steps, like start from the bottom, like make it slowly, gradually educate people and then like uh, use this huge user base in, um, all indeed, for the benefit indeed, of the country. Indeed, and also I think it's important to be really transparent uh, with all the the infrastructure, with the structure, and also that you can apply to be a competition uh, for Web2 companies who mm -hmm. are not changing to Web3, like I'm telling you an example in DeFi, like Western Union or MoneyGram. But if you work in the Layer2 network, for example, we can provide fee-less transactions. So what is not better for people who have less to already provide fee-less transactions? Okay, uh, well, speaking about uh, DeFi, how do you balance the need for decentralization with the need for user adoption in Web3 projects? I think really uh, the need is that the ownership needs to stay with the user. Really, it's the, the engagement with your own investment, your own ownership, and how can you do this? It's only to adopt to the Web3. Because so, now you see the, the, uh, the normal Web2 uh, uh, banks, the, the financial institutions, it's all centralized money. So it's not your ownership. So this mass adoption of Web3 will allow people to embrace uh, finally, this uh, yeah. independency, uh, uh, decentralization and ownership of their own assets, right? Indeed, indeed, Ivan. It, it will have ownership of itself and also uh, decentralized. So when you need to spend your money, you can spend it. It's not that you uh, need to go to the bank and they tell you you cannot spend your own money. What's on the bank? Mm -hmm. But at the same to change now. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, Ivan. Um, at the same time, banks offer security, some kind of protection of your money. And in Web3, you are, you are a sole uh, like a, a person who is responsible for, for your security. So my next question is, what are the main security uh, risks associated with Web3 technology? I think the, the main uh, problems is the scalability and also uh, what can be a real problem is like the, the, pro, the problems in the code, rigorous code. Uh, you need to do audits, you need to do penetration, you need really to to apply also a user-friendly and user-trustworthy uh, product in the market. So how can you do this to really uh, follow the steps of audit, penetration, smart contact controls, so even by several companies that you have a secure product. Mm -hmm. And I think also what you mentioned about the banks, it's not true because a bank can collapse too. And when a bank collapses, you're not assured to, to have your money back. Well, of course, but in DeFi space, in crypto space, there are lots of hacks, lots of breaches. So how uh, people will deal with that, especially newcomers? Yes, I think uh, this is a good question, Ivan. And um, I think really uh, you need to build a trust. So, of course, there can be hacks and you know what, what happened with Atomic Wallet or with other companies like FTX. But mm. I think now we also are in a new era where there's more transparency and more control on what's coming out now. Okay, my, my next question is, have you ever encountered any security breaches or hacks personally when working on Web3 projects? 
Um, to be honest, we created uh, one of our first uh, wallet application, and when we, uh, uh, one of our developers, he had created a, um, a software to scan your security breaches in your app. Mm -hmm. so we found some security breaches, and since then we we are controlling it, doing new audits. So it can be really tricky business, of course, when you're building your own apps, you need to work with third parties to control your apps too. Mm -hmm. So you gotta get rid of that internal, uh, like diversions of some sort of uh, hacks that comes from uh, inside the company, right? Well, that's really tricky actually. Normally it's in the code, the problems in the code or in the smart contracts where there's breaches. So ah, really- so it, uh, it was not intentionally. No, it was not intentionally. Ah, so ah, this is I'm sorry. Really, no, no, not intentionally, but there was okay. no uh, heavy security breach. There were some errors in the code. Because but I, this is how we learn from your mistakes. Because I've heard stories when like uh, developers intentionally put some you know, back doors in the code so that others cannot notice that and they um, use that. Make use of and like leave. They it. can, they can, but when you're really building a legit professional company, you need to do it, follow the steps in the legal mm -hmm. work. We are, for example, incorporated since two years. We have a whole legal team, a whole developers team behind it, so that you really have uh, trust to the customer, to the user. Is we our mission is bank the unbanked, but if your bank is not safe, you cannot. Uh, you cannot sell this to, to the people and it needs to be accessible for everybody. That's right. And transparent, of course. Yes, of course. Okay, my next question is, can you give an example of a successful Web3 projects and explain what made them so successful? To be honest, Ivan, I think some uh, projects what I really like and think are su successful are projects like Solana or A Defi Lending Protocol, Uniswap, because it's all decentralized exchange amplify success and really their open source nature strong communities and simple yet uh, just powerful functionalities so for me these are like projects where i look up to and to take an uh, example from mm -hmm. interesting because i've heard many stories about solana and its sort of decentralization because well not everything is going smooth with Solana, I think, uh, as of now, because, you know, all that FTX story and all their, well, um, like stoppages when they, when this, when the network is, was down for, for some time. So what do you say to that? This is true, but you see always, uh, for example, what we have with uh, XRP, everybody was like uh, putting them down, down, down until they win the court case. And they went skyrocketing. So I think every project they have their <laughs> they have their obstacles. But uh, yes, you need to need to need to put these mistakes behind, uh, put the patch the the vitals, and mm -hmm. continue the good work. Because I think Solana, of course, the FTX story. But uh, let's see how they're gonna do in the future. Yeah, and it's quite young project at the same time. So it's like yeah. what four years maybe. Of five years. That's why lending protocol oh. is something they really look up to. It's, uh, mm -hmm. But I like everything what is decentralized and open source. This is why I mentioned Solana, not really work wise or just uh, ah. story behind, you know? Yeah, okay, I get your point. Okay, but uh, my alternative question is Have you worked on Web3 projects that actually failed? And what did you learn from that experience? It's more that I invested in projects who failed or that it was projects who turned out to be a Ponzi or a scam. Mm -hmm. so, so it was more on my side that I didn't do enough research or enough. But of course, some projects are so good made that uh, this, so I, this I see for me as a failure. So what did you learn from that experience? To not invest, like you need to do your research. It was like early stage uh, for me in crypto. So you really need to do your research behind the behind the founders, behind the community. Is it organic? Is it, is it bought? How they're doing on Twitter, on Discord? Really do your research well before you invest in the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually the basic stuff when dealing with Basic, crypto. but not yeah. sometimes 
you know yeah. when you want to buy something you have this excited feeling without yeah. thinking you already buy and then you start thinking yeah, <laughs> so nice. it's just advice to to do well your your research before investing yeah people often neglect that and you should keep in mind always that basic style golden truth that you know keeps you afloat do your, do your own research and that's <laughs> like follows from people who are investing in in this project because this is not how it works mm -hmm. okay my next question is how do you address scalability challenges in web3 projects and especially um, these challenges that africa face i think really uh, uh the scalability remains a challenge for web3 uh, who really in regions with limited infrastructure implementing different blockchain solutions is a good way and also different layer uh, different state channels side chains can really elevate the congestion of the main blockchain ensure, ensuring smoother user experience you know mm -hmm. but why so africa? i think africa for uh, i already worked there since more than 12 years and i think it's the best way uh, to develop africa we work also in energy, in in waste. Uh, the sun is there, the people need it. So I think we you need to work against the system, even mm -hmm. if if it takes more steps. What you tell, uh, what you said before, the baby steps. Mm -hmm. We are willing to take them, but in the end, to have mass adoption, financial inclusion, and really serve the unbanked. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely, Africa has some potential. Really has. Yes. Yeah, and you know, some got somebody got to do that, and yeah, I really appreciate people doing that because you know you need to help regions that need that help, that need that support, and you just can't stand stand aside and do nothing. Yeah, of course. Um, okay, I have two questions to you. So the next, um, the next one is going to be like, what do you think is the biggest risk that Web three ecosystem face in the next few years or so? I think uh, the biggest risk is really the, the regulatory, the, the especially, um, how can I tell you? I think it's all governmental, the regulations, uh, how will the banks uh, adapt, how will the government adapt, uh, what laws will there come. I think really uh, we need to work closely with the, the, the stakeholders, the regulators, imperative to shape like a balanced uh, system. So even for us, we want, we are working closely with the government to already establish certain regulations. Mm -hmm. Really, uh, to because financial inclusion needs to happen now. The revolution needs to happen now. Like bank the unbanked. This is really our mission. Mm -hmm. But will African countries be willing to cooperate? Uh, yes, I think you can take a big example on what's happening in Nigeria, Kenya, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Local currencies are failing and you can build stable coins on, on the same local currency and to have like a stable, uh, stable coin. What is not local currency is failing in many countries. And it's what you see in Nigeria, they did a mass adoption of Web3 and crypto payments. And mm -hmm. already in Nigeria, there is living more than 220 million uh, people in, in, in this country. So it's huge impact. And now it's going more up. And I think all over Africa, they're ready to re revolutionize against the banks, the government, because it's the people are, they cannot go on longer like this. Mm -hmm, indeed. I think, yeah, that's gonna, that might offer a solution to that problem. And well, definitely crypto has some chance to change people's lives and you know have an impact, especially in African countries. Oh, I think Ivan, all crypto blockchain solutions, but also let's not forget the different parts of artificial intelligence because yeah. artificial intelligence can do so much in the education and the health sector. This is something what we're working on because we, we, we forget the refi side of stories, you know? Mm -hmm. The refi can be so mass adoption for African countries to also achieve a, a certain education part to to come work in international companies as blockchain experts as what kind of experts but the, we need to to step up now for the health education it needs to happen now. 
Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's time now actually too. So, uh, but speaking about the future, what excites you most about the future of Web3 technology? I think uh, everything ignites me really. I'm a big fan of DeFi, of course. I talk all, a lot about DeFi. I'm really a big fan of emerging markets. I think AI will play a big role uh, combined with Web3. I think companies, they need to integrate to adopt these solutions, blockchain solution, layer solution, protocol solutions, mm -hmm. to, to do a bigger, bigger mass adoption and the time is now, like, uh, there's so many underserved with the global financial systems. It needs to adapt and to make this huge impact. I, I'm really excited and I think uh, you are too, Ivan. Yes, me indeed, of course. And yeah, I think that's a perfect ending point for today's talk because certainly the time is now to act, right? We can all agree to that. Yes, indeed. Okay, so thanks for joining, Jasper. It was really a pleasure talking to you. Again, for all of you guys, uh, it was Jasper Ham, CEO and co-founder of Crypto Bank of Africa and also an entrepreneur and investor in Africa. Thank you for listening to our interviews, so this sort of uh, podcast, whatever it is. It was really a pleasure, Jasper. It was pleasure was all mine. And uh, I wish you a great day and uh, let's keep each other posted <laughs> on the evolution, the revolution of Africa. Yeah, revolution is coming. Okay, thanks everyone for joining. See you soon. Thank you guys. Goodbye.